Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to talk about European fighters. Now, I guess it depends how you want to define European, right? To me, it's Europe. I mean, including Russia, uh, which is, you know, you could say it's part of the continent of Asia, too, or mostly. But either way, you know, European and Eastern European um, fighters. You know, in boxing for the longest time, European fighters... Um, by hardcore boxing fans here in the United States, it's very rare that you will find like um, respect for Europeans. Like you know, it's it's very very rare. Um, in the UK, you could say yeah, that there has you know, but outside of the UK, that there's this talk about how European fighters are a bunch of bums. Like I mean, just bums. Like outside of Lennox Lewis, who's not a bum? You know, like, you know, just stuff like that. And, I mean, I could see, I could see what people mean by that. And, and I want to kind of go over a couple things here. Um, keep in mind that the heavyweight title, the heavyweight championship, and the main weight classes, at least the ones that have been part of the glamour, um, whether it's middleweight, light heavyweight, well, you know, light heavyweight, middleweight, and welterweight, right? Even lightweight. Um, have been dominated um, by, you know, or a large portion of them were held, those titles were held by American fighters, okay? Um, we had a couple, even lower than that, a couple contenders here and there, but um, we're really known for that, right? And the much lower weight classes, I mean, the South America and Asian countries really had a lock on that for, for many years. Um, you get some Europeans here and there, but for the most part, European fighters, while well, you'll get a contender here and there, um, outside of the UK, it was very rare that you would find, like, a a fighter that just rocked your world, you know what I mean? Um, you had some here and there, but it's not enough. Max Schmeling, right, the man who, who uh, gave, Le um, I said Lennox, uh, who gave Joe Lewis his first professional fight. I think he was a hell of a fighter. He was European. He was from Germany. Um in fact, Braddock chose not to fight him to defend the. I mean, that's the biggest duck job in the history of boxing. Okay, um, but he fought Joe Lewis instead, um, even though Schmeling had defeated him. Right, but it is what it is. Ancient history, right? But for the longest time, look at the heavyweight division. I mean, Americans dominated the heavyweight scene. There's no doubt about that. Um, it wasn't until Lennox Lewis hit the scene that there was a man who dominated that division that was not American. Um, but if you go, just look at the big eras, right? I mean, now you have the Klitschko, who's obviously European. Um, that before that, you had Lennox. Before that, he had Holyfield and Tyson, right? Uh, before that, you know, even like when Foreman won the title, you had more. You had Tyson way before that. Um, Buster Douglas, who, you know, big upset, right? You know, he was from here. Uh, before before that whole era, you had um, Larry Holmes. Um, before Larry Holmes, you had Ali. Before Ali, uh, you had you know even the contenders there. You know George Foreman, uh, Frazier, right? Um, before all that, uh, you had Sonny Liston. You had Floyd Patterson. I mean, just look at that American fighters, right? So for the longest time, we've been known as dominating the scene. Um, where European fighters, the sport of boxing was just kind of, it was there, but it wasn't part of the culture as much as it was here or in Latin America or in parts of Asia. Uh, it really wasn't. Uh, European boxing kind of grew within the times, right? Um, but now, now, I think things have changed, I mean, drastically. While there has been a fall in the American fight game, uh, for the most part, um, I, I do believe that there's been a, an increase in, in, a, in talent in Europe. Um, one example I'll give you is basketball. You cannot compare um, the, the European basketball players that, that played in the 90s with the European basketball players playing today. Some European basketball players today, uh, like uh, Dirk, right, from Dallas Mavericks, are like the leader of a basketball franchise, like one of the best players, all-stars, 
Like, you know what I mean? If, when you think about it. So um, I think that's what we're seeing with boxing right now. Uh, the fact, these are the facts. Uh, more boxing gyms are opening in Europe while they're closing in the United States. Okay? That's number one. Um, a lot of these countries in Europe, okay, due to some of the socialist, you know, governments they have, they have a lot of people living in poverty, okay? And it, it's, it's always been a reality that poverty has always created fighters, okay? Not that there hasn't always been poverty, right? But the point I'm trying to make is boxing is starting to become part of the culture in Europe. And, and the fact is boxing is a very cheap sport to get in compared to other sports, okay? I mean, what, it's a cheap sport. I mean, those are just the facts. It's a very cheap sport to get into, which is why it's a poor man's sport, okay? Also, the governments of these European countries are funding, um, you know, the, the amateurs for to create, you know, boxing medalists to, to win gold medals in the Olympics. That's that's really what they want. But at the end of the day, they they are building these fighters, man. And and you're gonna see, okay, with guys like Lomachenko, okay, with guys like GGG. These this is not. These are not your European fighters, your, at least Eastern European fighters of the past. Okay, they're not. Like they, these guys are being trained by knowledgeable trainers. They have people that know what they're doing, and they're teaching them these fundamentals. Okay, and the fact is, they got, a lot of them got better fundamentals than our fighters. Okay, there's always been this 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 thought that American fighters we don't care about the medals, even though we do. We do care. Okay. But, but there's this idea, we don't care about that. We're, we're training them to be um, professionals, right? Yet they're failing at that, man. Like they're, they're failing drastically in the professional ranks. Something is being done wrong in our amateur system, okay? While there's a less influx of fighters, we still have the fighters, though. Like, we are a country of millions of people. We have thousands participating in the sport. We're doing something wrong. They're doing something right, okay? They even started to beat the Cubans in the amateurs, okay? Once you start doing that, all right, and if you want to say, oh, it's the amateurs, and look at the Cubans that turn pro and look at the success they've had, whether we're talking about Gamboa, whether we're talking about Reagandau, uh, whoever you want, Eris Landilar, all right? Those are the level of, of fighters that we're talking about. Um, look at Lomachenko, turns pro, beats a Mexican fighter, and beats him with body shots. That, 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 to me, that, that's eye-opening. GGG, landing body shots. This guy is being trained the way they train Mexican fighters, okay? Um, this is not your typical old-school, standing straight up, no head movement. Europeans, they're not. I remember, um, I felt this way, and I remember when Dmitry Priyov was going to face Danny Jacobs, right? And I remember it because it was on an undercard. Um, I forgot what undercard, I, I forget, but it was a, some pay per view. I think it was a rematch of Marquez and Diaz, okay? And Priyav, here I'm thinking, oh man, they're going to put this dude with some European. This is probably what the promoters thought, by the way. They probably had the same thinking I did, and the way some people still think. They put some ranked European there, which is going to stand in front of, of freaking Danny Jacobs, and Danny Jacobs is going to beat the shit out of him and knock him out, right? That's basically that was the thinking, and that's and I'll admit it up front. That's the thinking I had. Okay, boy, was I wrong. Okay, Dimitri Priyov showed better head movement than Danny Jacobs in that fight. Okay, he was slipping and dodging punches. Okay, and knocked him the fuck out. Okay, knocked out one of our best prospects at the time. And then Jacob still could do a lot of big things in the fight game. But th that day I kind of opened my eyes and I said, all oh, right, th this is a little different now. Well, we are dealing with a whole new breed of Eastern European fighters especially. Even in the UK, Carl Frotch does not fit the quote-unquote European mold. He doesn't in no way, shape, or form. I mean, this guy is out toughing, guys. That that's always been an American trait, okay, or uh, a trait of the Americas, okay, to out tough somebody. That toughness, you know, that's always been that trait, which is completely missing. Um, I remember reading articles about 
and it was somewhat true. I mean, you know, stereotypes are stereotypes, but the Europeans saw boxing as, as another, just another sport, like volleyball or soccer, or you know, I mean, they didn't think of it in the mentality of a fight. You know, they think of it in mentality of mathematics and angles and stuff like that. They have a different mentality of it, but we are dealing with a whole new breed of European fighters, Eastern European fighters, by the way. And and it's you see that influence. You see the culture shifting, okay? And it has to do with a lot of things. I think as the lower weight classes became more popular over time, um, you got you got to always think with a 20-year gap, okay? What was happening 20 years ago in boxing, okay? What, what got these guys in Europe right now that are now in their 20s, late 20s, early 30s, or early 20s, what got them into boxing to begin with, right? It had to be these lower weight classes. I mean, Felix Sturm, his hero was Oscar De Loya, right? And Felix Sturm, you know, he's you know he's kind of straightforward, right? Uh, but I mean, one of the best jabs I've ever seen, uh, at least in recent years, much better than I wish they taught the fighters here how to throw a jab like that. You know, what I mean, you, they they can't throw jabs for shit now. You know, you got guys leading with uppercuts. I mean, unbelievable. But you know what? What motivated these fighters? What got them into boxing? And and I think they're inspired by what they see. Um, they want to. You know, they see Julio Cesar Chavez, and they're seeing the body punching, and they want to learn that, right? It, it's they see you see what works, you implement it, and, and you go with it, right? And if you have the right people, the Ukrainian boxing team, okay is for the most part, I saw these guys fighting like pros and beating the amateurs at their own game. Okay, this is why I've been telling people Lomachenko is a real deal. Okay, I mean, that that's this guy's going to probably get a title shot in the second fight. That That is unheard of. That is crazy. Okay, GGG is knocking dudes out left and right. But it... way man just thought I'd say about that we may turn around one day and they're dominating the sport if we don't get our kids ready if we don't teach them the fundamentals if they can't throw a fucking proper jab okay right now Puerto Rico all right is having fucking trainer problems they, they can't Produce a good fighter to worth the shit. They're not producing great fighters. Why? Because you got all these promoters and managers, and with this damn agenda of fan friendly, fan friendly, all this bullshit. Okay, we got to start creating good fighters again, or we're gonna turn around and they're gonna dominate the sport, and they're not gonna have a reason to come fight in the United States to prove shit. Okay, a lot of them are still ignorant, by the way. A lot, I see a lot of them like come to U.S. because they want to be a big star. Uh, maybe one's told them, but <laughs> they're a big star in their country, okay? So it is what it is, man. Peace.